is what you want to do. So if you've got something, uh, a, p a piece of equipment that you have in mind, I guess as far as that you want to make a mod for, as far as to edit some of those simple parameters in the XML, uh, first thing you want to do is obviously pinpoint that in your, if you've got Steam, pinpoint which mod it is that you want to do, th do this to. And uh, there's at least one thing that you'll need out of this. Again, just keeping this very simple. Um, you don't need anything but this XML for the most part out of the, the piece. So this is coming right out of the uh, data vehicles. Uh, in this case, is the New Holland uh, Broad. I think a 9090X, which is an olive harvester, uh, just, just for clarity. And so we're going to pull this out of the actual game files for starters here. Create a mod folder, guess as far as for uh, what, you're, what you're trying to create here. I tended to use the same name as the original model that's in Giants. FS22 underscore broad 9090X underscore modded. You can name however you want, just to differentiate, I guess, as far as for, from it being an original, an original uh, item that's in Giants, you know, already in the game, as opposed to not. So when you put this in your mods folder, you'll clearly be able to understand. Name it something that makes sense, I suppose. When I say that, all right. So what we want to do now is actually open up this mod folder. Uh, another thing you're going to need that's going to be critical, I guess, as far as for it to be recognized by the game, is a mod desk. And the mod desk is what has all the call signs, I guess, as far as of what what the game needs to look for, as far as the sort picture and uh, things of that nature. So opening that up in any notepad. Uh, any notepad you can open up and just straight up notepad. I like to use notepad plus plus Highly recommend it uh, to be honest to make uh, your XML editing much much easier um, I've already done an edit to so I'm using it as an example for mod desk I'm using an example from the Ropa Tiger 6s That's already been previously made so I'm going to use that as my guide um, You can use any mod desk from any other mod that's out there But it's just critical I guess as far as you get yourself a mod desk to go along with this mod that you're trying to create of something that's already in the game that, that's that's a definitely a prerequisite so as of this video um, the current mod desk version is 68 uh, with all the latest updates to um, the game I'm gonna leave all my credentials in here because as far as for uh, creating this of uh, this particular mod I'm also adding giant software because as far as is part of the author because it is coming from giant software so to give proper credits to that, the version, uh, in this case, it'll just be one, uh, as far as being a mod version. If you do uh, successive updates, I guess, as far as to the mod down the road, you can change that as appropriate. We're going to change the name here. This is not the Ropa Ultimate, so this is a name, a fictional name that I came up with this. So we're going to call this one, um, if we go into the actual XML for this, it's actually called this. So we're going to borrow that right from the XML for this particular harvester. Slap that into the mod desk. And this is what's gonna show up in the game, uh, both uh, for mod selection and um, uh, in the game, I guess, as far as what it'll show. So when you're activating mods, uh, when you start the game up in your new career save game, this is what's gonna show. So you wanna use something, again, that makes sense. Uh, so just to change it from what it is by default, I'm gonna actually add this as uh, we'll just use max ultimate uh, just something to differentiate it from the original so so when you're looking through the store you'll be able to know that that is uh, you know that is your mod so in this case I'll just call it uh, max because we're going to be changing uh, capacity uh, the capacity to this thing as well as the speed uh, as far as how fast it goes uh, in the form of harvesting so that's first and foremost and then also you want to put in the description here this is what's going to show just a little blurb in there if you do happen to look in the details of the mod uh, within mod ac activation it's not really critical that you put it in there you can leave this area blank if you so choose uh, just for the sake of this video I'll go ahead and put uh, the proper infos just to kind of give additional infos apply that and then we'll just add some information in here runs at a higher speed that, that is something we'll be editing on this thing and higher capacity 
Okay. Capacity. So just a little bit of description, I guess, as far as what's going on with this, and we know what's going. Also, if you want to adjust the price, uh, we'll take a look at the price of this deal. So by default, uh, this particular harvester costs uh, 306000 So if you want to change that, we can do that right here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it about half his price. So we'll do like, we'll do 150000 just to make it a little bit simpler. You can put whatever you choose. And then also I'm going to plug that into the mod desk. Just as that little bit of information, because this is totally separate from the actual XML for the, the vehicle itself. This is just the exponent explanatory uh, type of information on mod activation, as I said. Uh, capacity. Um, this is something else we're going to adjust in the XML. So let's look for that and we'll search for capacity. Uh, so we're just going to do a find, and it should already be... Oh, it's over on my other screen. My bad. So we're going to search for capacity. And that's going to bring us right to the section of what deals with capacity on here. So initially, this particular harvester has a capacity of 4,000 for olives. So we want to be able to change that as far as how much uh, it is. Now, depending on how much of a capacity you apply to this, like say 1 million, you're going to need to add uh, additional information to this to this area, I guess, as far as that's, that uh, doesn't update the mass to it. Because obviously, if you don't do that, you're going to weigh the vehicle down, obviously not be able to move it. So I think in this case, just for the for the sake of this, you can set this to whatever you like. I'm just going to go 40,000, just add an extra zero. Okay, so we'll do it at 40,000. I'm also going to put that information in the mod desk. As far as capacity, we're going to put this to 40,000. So again, this is just informational, I guess, as far as on mod activation uh, prior, you know, with setting up your career save game. It gives you a little bit of information. It's like, do I really want to activate that? You can find all that information before you actually activate it. That's really all this information is good for. Okay, now we want to change our icon. Now I did do a little bit of preliminary things here because as far as to create an icon. What I base the icon on is based on the store image. Now, I've already gone ahead and do that. I'll probably make another video on how to make an icon based on you know, what we're doing here. Um, I'll save that for a, a separate video. I've already gone ahead and made a separate one based on the, the store icon just to kind of show you what's going on. So this is based on, it's got already the transparency into it based on that default store image. All I, you know, all I did was basically size it down to the icon which is a little bit smaller um, just for a little bit of clarity. So that's already done. I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy into our mod folder. So that's really the only thing you need. You can totally, if you ch so choose to, just to have it reference the uh, for the icon is just the store image. That works as well. Um, let's go ahead and paste this right into our mod folder. I take the approach of uh, creating a nice, you know, nice and neat icon. But if you wanted to, you could totally just take the store image that's in the XML. Uh, in fact, let's go back up here for a second. So up in here, it's going to say, it's going to tell you what image it's looking for, which is this guy right here. All you have to do is put this information right here into your mod desk, I guess as far as what your icon is. Uh, you can go even further as far as to put that store icon right into the mod folder itself, uh, for example. Let's go back to our mod folder. You can put that same store image from the actual game directory. So from here, you can actually copy this and then just reference it right into your mod folder. Either way, um, that'll that'll at least show some type of picture uh, uh, upon mod activation. Like I said, I've taken a little bit um, extra step, I guess, as far as to make a nicer icon based on that store image. So either way you reference it, that's going to, but probably the main thing that you want to keep in mind, I guess, as far as to make that uh, modded Giants model that's already in the game separate and make it a something that'll show up in your game is to have a mod desk. Mod desk is definitely, definitely very, very important. I guess as far as so we want to change this here. Like I said, this is based on the ROPA that I did. So let's go back to our modded folder. I need to basically just copy the name of this icon that I created for this mod and paste that into the mod desk. So this is where what'll when the game loads up. This is what the game will look for, I guess, as far as that icon, right? So it is multiplayer. So the fact that it is a Giants model, we're, we're going to make the assumption that it is multiplayer 
compatible. So you definitely want to determine whether or not if it's if it is true or false. True obviously means that it does work in MP as far as on a hosted session or dedicated server. So we're going to leave that there. Now this 110 section, this is kind of not necessary, but if you want to uh, create statements within the store as far as what information will show up in the store when you're uh, selecting your item to buy in the store, this is where all this will come in here. This is all based on the uh, the Ropa Tiger success, like I said, so we would need to change some things in here if we, if we want to use these. You don't have to. Um, these can totally be left out if uh, you so choose. 100% not required. Uh, the thing you want to keep in mind is when you use these different function uh, call deals, at least as far as in your mod desk, don't use something that the game already uses because it'll just use the default uh, statement. So um, it's a little bit, I, I think for now, just to kind of give you you know kind of speed this up a little bit i'll go ahead and leave this section out i'll just block this out this is another thing that's really nice with notepad plus plus if any information that you just want to block out and not completely delete it as far as to use it at a later time all you have to do is highlight the area that you want to block out right click it and then comment that out and that's automatically this information will not be read by the game so we're just going to leave that out for now now, the only other thing you need in your mod desk is the store item. So that's actually going to be the call for your um, your actual XML that we've edited or we'll be editing right here. So we'll get that plugged in here. So we'll go ahead and delete these. We only have the one XML for this particular mod. So we need to change this. We're going to go ahead and copy the properties or the name of that right here. But this is all within our modded folder, right? So we're going to copy the name of this XML go back into our mod desk and actually call that up here so what this does again there's a lot of uh, things going on in just this mod desk alone what this is going to do is actually whoops i gotta put xml make sure you have the dot xml there um, for your store item this is what's telling the game what xml to read as far as to, to load that up uh, upon you know activation of your mod for your career save game so this, these are all the critical pieces. So the only non-critical pieces is the 110 and the description, pretty much. So you do want to have a name. I mean, obviously you want to be able to tell uh, what you know what the mod name is. If you don't have the mod name, obviously it's going to be a little bit harder to uh, be able to activate that. So having a picture, referencing it, I guess, to uh, from the store, and you can pull that. Like I said, I guess as far as right from here, put that in your mod desk if you so choose, or bring that store picture right into your mod folder and call it right within your mod itself. Either way, call that up there so you have some type of picture to go with that. Uh, the 110 is definitely, uh, the 110 section is definitely not a requirement, but you can add your own language in here, I guess as far as for information it'll show in the store. And then the only other critical piece is your store item to call that XML uh, for that, in this case, this uh, Olive Harvester. So that's just a quick rundown of what is required and what isn't, I guess as far as in there. Uh, bear in mind too, like I already said, you do want to keep, um, if you don't put any information in here at all for the C data, at least leave the C data um, tags in there as far as the beginning tag and the end tag and leave it blank. And in most cases, if you're using Notepad++, that'll show up in orange, right? So that's another really nice new, uh, reason and highly recommend as far as using Notepad++ is to kind of keep these things clear. I know some of this information seems a little bit off the wall, but this mod desk is super duper important um, as far as if you want to get your giants, um, your modded giants in game uh, deal, I guess, as far as to show up in the game and be able to activate it and use it, use it uh, accordingly. Totally important. That's why I'm spending a little bit more time, I guess, as far as to explain that. So with that all being explained, now we're gonna get right into what we want to change in here. Now, a lot of this information is Totally available, I guess, as far as on, you know, on the net, I guess, as far as how to edit uh, both the, how fast the, the, the vehicle or the implement goes, um, as well as uh, changing the capacity. So I won't go as much into detail, I guess, with that. So what we want to do on this one, obviously, is to change the speed limit. By default, it's an eight. We're going to go ahead and set this to a hundred, just to make this go a little bit faster, uh, especially under load, right? You know, that's really about the only value you need to change, just like uh, normal, I guess as far as with the speed limit value. 
it's pretty you know pretty straightforward i guess as far as it'll go much much faster but not too crazy fast uh, than it would by default all right so the other thing we want to adjust we've already shown that is the capacity so we're going to go ahead and find that again let's put this over on my other screen uh so capacity and then we need to get to this section where it was for the owls. We already changed this 40,000. We already put that in the mod desk as well, as far as what's going on with that. We, so the fact that it's at a 40,000, there's really no need to put the update mass. Okay. So unless you're using a really extreme number, like say 500,000 or a million, you know, something really super duper extreme, you really don't need the update mass. So if you put this at 400,000, for example, if you added one more zero, then you would have to use that update mass uh, piece of code. It doesn't really hurt to put the update mass regardless, but just to kind of give a little bit more clarity on how um, update update mass true or false works with the capacity. So it's it's only really 100% necessary because as far as when you put a really extreme capacity as opposed to just um, adding a zero in this case to put it at 40,000 instead of 400,000. The 400,000 would require the update mass, just just for a, a little bit of a footnote and clarity. So that's the only thing we want out, uh, thing we want to update to this mod to this this particular deal is the speed. We did the price and also the capacity, right? And we can also update the here in the name as far as the same as we did it in the mod desk as far as to put this as max. You can put whatever you want just to differentiate it from the original the original piece. Pretty much that simple. You can put ultimate max modded whatever you want to put just to just to, just to differentiate that is pretty much the only big deal so now with all this done we'll go ahead and save these all these items as far as this xml and the mod desk which is also an xml but this is the mod desk it's very critical can't stress that enough uh, as far as making a mod okay with all that done now we can go back into our modded folder and just confirm that we've got everything that we need as far as our updated xml for this it's going to call that's probably something else I should mention here. So because we're not doing any um, updates to the model itself, as far as the physical or visual look of the model, we're still just wanting to load in the original model that Giants has provided. Uh, the uh, I3D, as far as the actual model, is going to be right within the game. This is why you don't need that in your mod folder. Because even our modded XML that we have in our, in our, in our mod zip, is going to be calling the same model as that's already in the game. So again, unless you're making some wholesale changes to the look of the model itself that's in already in the game, then you would have to bring that I3D. Only then would you have to bring that right into your mod folder. So because we're not doing that, we're leaving this very simple. This is all we need right here. So hopefully that's enough of an explanation, I guess, as far as the. Um, to get your giants model that you know, mod from a giants uh, vehicle or an implement into the game and totally separate um, and being able to activate in there so all you'd have to do from here is select all and use your I like to use seven zip but you can use pretty much any uh, zipping utility even the windows zipping utility uh, works fine as well make sure that you select all as far as your items that you want to zip up in my case, I'm using 7 sips. I'm going to add this to Archive. And what it should do, it's going to bring up a dialog for me, like this, as far as to say what, what's the name of your mod, what's the name of your zip file, which that's going to be that's going to be good. We'll go ahead and do that. And what that should do is put it right in here. Now, this is your zipped folder, your zipped uh, file that you'll be able to put right in your mods folder. You'll be able to test that out, confirm or whatever that it does uh, allow you to activate it in your game and uh, test it out and see where it's at if you need to make any adjustments go right back to um, anything that you've already adjusted in your mod folder so i know that was a little bit long-winded uh that's the, the short and simple i guess as far as the explanation of how to get that in there hopefully this helps and if you got uh, any other uh questions i guess as far as how to do this feel free to leave some uh leave some comments whatever uh and uh i'll try and explain a little bit better, I suppose. So uh, thank you for watching.